what's the difference between dark matter and antimatter or is it the same thing well dark matter and antimatter are not the same thing and so what is dark matter dark matter is a missing uh, it is a missing it is an it is an unidentified component of the mass energy composition of the universe so let me uh, show you let me share a screen with you okay let's take a look at this so this is the matter energy mass energy composition of the universe about 4.9% of the universe is ordinary matter so this is everything you can see in the universe all the planets and stars and nebulae and galaxies and all other luminous matter this is just 4.9% of the actual universe so we understand less than 5% of the actual universe right more than 95% of the universe is entirely unknown to us we do not have the even the basic understanding of what it is we know the composition so about 26.8% or thereabouts is what we call dark matter and the remaining portion about 68% is what is called dark energy now dark energy is a really mysterious thing dark matter is slightly better understood it is something that is uh, that interacts only gravitationally it does not interact via the electromagnetic interaction or the weak interaction or the strong interaction it only interacts with ordinary matter via the force of gravity so this could be some form of a purely gravitating particle or it could be a class a family of particles we seriously don't know at this point we have a number of theories but as of now there is absolutely uh, no direction there are many theories some are some are more more uh, so some theories are more in vogue right now some theories are less in vogue but none of these theories has ever come close to being proven or or in any way at all so that is what dark matter is and how did we discover dark matter is an interesting story so when we look at uh, galaxies we can calculate the amount of mass in a galaxy based on we can calculate the amount of mass in a galaxy based on the the light output of the galaxy so we can estimate the number of stars and the mass that is in a galaxy and then we can uh, and we know that galaxies they rotate around their uh, their axis or around their center so based on the laws of physics and the amount of mass a galaxy contains based on the light it emits we can uh, tentatively uh, estimate or predict how fast its arms will be rotating how fast how fast they will be going around the center of the galaxy and the predictions never match observations the predictions are in line are supposed to be in line with kepler's second law in case you have studied that but what we find is that it doesn't work that way the galaxy's arms move at a very different rate so let me show that it's it's called rotation curves and this is what it is so this white dashed line over here if you can see my uh, pointer the white da dashed line is what we expect from the visible disk of of a typical galaxy this is based on estimations on calculations based on the laws of physics and based on the amount of uh, ma matter we can observe and what we see is very different the yellow and blue points are observational evidence and they are very very different so the rotation curves of galaxies are very different they rotate faster than what we would expect them to and and the the best way to explain this discrepancy is to hypothesize that the galaxies contain some invisible matter which is which far exceeds the visible matter so this is what we call a dark matter halo and this explains the discrepancy in the rotation curves of of galaxies so this is how the idea of dark matter first emerged and then now we have seen other evidence of dark matter for example gravitational lensing etc so that in brief is dark matter what is antimatter antimatter is essentially antiparticles it, see ordinary matter like us right or our bodies etc everything we know is composed of uh, subatomic particles protons neutrons electrons and so forth right that is our ordinary baryonic matter and and hadronic matter 
Now, antimatter is composed of antiprotons, antineutrons, antielectrons. So an antiparticle is has the same, exact same mass as a regular particle, but it's charged, its charge is flipped, it's opposite. So an antiproton has a negative charge and the same mass as a regular proton, which has a positive charge. An, an anti-electron or a positron has a positive charge and the same mass as a regular electron. And anti-neutrons also exist, which have uh, which have anti-quarks instead of the regular quarks, which make up a neutron. So antimatter happens; uh, it it manifests itself at the baryonic level and even at the quark level. So so that's what antimatter is. It's essentially uh, it has opposite charges, and certain quantum numbers are also uh, different. But the masses are the same. So an anti-proton and a positron could get together and combine to form an atom of anti-hydrogen. So that's what antimatter, antimatter or antimatter is. Uh, the, the thing about antimatter is that it immediately annihilates when it comes into contact with regular matter. So if a proton would come into contact with an anti-proton, they would immediately annihilate, annihilate each other and give off photons. So these two masses they will combine and produce pure energy in the form of, of in the form of photons by the very famous equation which we all know E equals mc squared. So it is very difficult to uh, so antimatter has been observed it it is produced regularly in uh, large uh, colliders such as the large hadron collider and other such uh, uh, instruments. It's also emitted in, in certain forms of radiation. For example, you have positrons that are emitted from certain kinds of radiation, which has given rise to this technology called positron emission tomography, PET. You know about the PET scans, PET scans. So that is a, a technology which has been developed because of the emission of positrons, which is antimatter from radiation. And so there are various ways of producing antimatter. But it is very difficult to store it because, like I said, the moment it comes into contact with regular matter, it, it just explodes. It, it uh, gives off a large amount of energy. So to store antimatter, you would have to keep, you would have to confine it in a pure vacuum. You, could, you cannot even have a single molecule of oxygen or nitrogen or anything in there. And it has to be confined in the center of 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 a container which is which has vacuum so you would need some form of magnetic field to confine it there so it's very difficult to produce any quantity any significant quantity of antimatter and it's even more difficult to store it so that is what antimatter is dark matter and antimatter are very different things